Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Surprise, I am live. I am live. I am live. I'm going to give you a moment to come on in the room. I'm not going to sing it, but those who know, know. Um, I did want to come on. Briefly to explain some things to you and make sure I am where I'm supposed to be uh, If you are here Please put in the comment that you are here so that I can say good morning to you See how you doing? Facebook moves things around so I am Sometimes I can't always see where people are but if you're coming into the room, please share and like and love and all the things that you do uh, with this platform. Good morning, good morning, good morning. How you doing? I see you. Good morning, Angie. Good morning, Ivy. Good morning, Marcus. Glad to see you all. I'm going to go ahead and get started because my time is of the essence. Uh, good morning, Dr. Jamie. I want to say good morning to you, you, and even you, as they say uh, in, in black church vernacular and black radio broadcast vernacular. Uh, my name is Natasha Robinson. I am the creator and curator of Legalese Please. It is a platform, digital as well as in person, designed to decode, demystify, and deconstruct legal language. So in short, we build you up by breaking it down, it being the barriers of comprehension, the barriers that legal language can sometimes uh, pose in terms of you understanding, sharing, and applying this language. And of course, we're just here to have a good old time. So if you were here, uh, please let me know in the comment section. Good morning, Rosalind. Good morning to see all of you all here. So. I do not take for granted your presence, and I do not take for granted the fact that maybe you have not seen an earlier post that I put on today. So in short, today is a very busy day. I start off today after um, what I thought was my daughter's school bus after several buses drove past her in order for me to drive her school to school only to see the bus she was supposed to be on drive past again. So. A whole bunch of stuff. So now I am situated and I am settled. Today at 10 a.m. Central Standard Time, Central Daylight Time, uh, 11 a.m. if you're on the East Coast and if you're on the West Coast, I think it's two or three hours. Uh, I'm not good with West Coast, so don't look at me for that. Um, but I definitely know at 10 a.m. Central uh, Time, I will be on Court TV only for an hour today. Uh, usually I'm on for about an hour or two because I got a lot of stuff to do today. Um, so I will be on Core TV, which is the main reason why I am coming live because I am not able to have the conversations, understandably, on Core TV with the viewers that I am able to have with you all. And so I wanted to explain some uh, things so that you understand uh, if you see either on Core TV later or if you see later on in local news or national news, uh, some of these cases that I'm going to explain to you, then you will be able to understand, oh, that's what uh, Natasha was talking about, okay? If this is your first time here, uh, welcome. Glad to have you. Uh, whether you are watching live or whether you are watching later, I'm glad for you to be here. If you have not already, like and share this video so that I can explain a couple things, not just to you, but those who you care about. So let's get started. So one of the cases that I'm going to be uh, expected to analyze as a guest on Core TV is the case of uh, involving, rather, Gwyneth Paltrow. Gwyneth Paltrow is a Oscar-winning actress who has appeared in many movies and in many TV shows. And she is being sued by, now I can't remember his name, I think his name is Sankerson. Uh, but he is a doctor and he is claiming uh, that um, 
He was skiing in Utah in 2016. And while he was skiing, he says that Gwyneth Paltrow is the person who um, skied into him um, or, or injured him. His name is Terry Sanderson. Okay, so I was right about the Sanderson part. Uh, he is a retired optometrist and he is uh, bringing civil allegations against Gwyneth Paltrow where he is suing her for negligence. So I want you to put a pin right there. He is suing her for negligence. She is counter suing and while he is suing her for whatever amount of money it is, she is only counter suing him for a dollar. That is a symbolic amount, uh, which is to suggest or at least uh, allow us to infer that she is not trying to uh, stake claim to money. What she is trying to stake claim to is the uh, upholding of her reputation. Good morning, Darla. Glad to see you. So I said put a pin right there because I want you to understand that usually on uh, any TV uh, a station or streaming, including Court TV, there is a commentary usually of criminal law. Criminal law uh, involves the cases where a person is a victim complainant and they are saying that someone has harmed them or injured them and as a result they are seeking a type of consequence that could result in incarceration, either in jail or in prison. That is criminal law. Criminal law usually focuses on whether the accused, the suspect, the defendant, whether they are going to receive some type of punishment and if that punishment is to occur, is that punishment going to be supervision by the court or the state or is it going to result in incarceration? In criminal law, you have two types of uh, punishment. You have uh, misdemeanor, which is anything that is less than 364, I'm sorry, 365 days or less. Uh, if you are found guilty or if you plead guilty, that could be a consequence of you serving in jail, 364 days or less. If you are charged with a felony and you plead guilty or you are found guilty, you could receive a punishment that could include 365 days or more in prison. Misdemeanors are usually less uh, criminal offenses and felonies are usually offenses that are more serious. Um, we're talking about like say criminal uh, sexual assault, kidnapping, um, the possession of cocaine, the selling of cocaine and all the way up to murder. Now today's case that involves Gwyneth Paltrow, uh, that is a civil case. That is the second biggest type of a uh, case that a person could bring or could face in court. Unlike in criminal court, where a person is looking at possible incarceration, in civil court, it is all about money uh, or being required to do something or being told not to do something from now on. Okay, usually that is called an injunction. So in civil court, what we're going to be talking about today or what I could be talking about today with Gwen and Paltrow involves whether or not she is negligent against the, the, the uh, plaintiff, the person who is bringing the civil allegation. So civil court operates a lot differently than criminal court. In civil court, it takes a lot longer because the percentage of cases uh, that go to trial in civil court are much less. Why? Because there's a process called discovery. Discovery is when both sides, the plaintiff and the defendant, are sending requests to each other. And in those requests, those are called derogatory, um, derogatories, interrogatories. Interrogatories are a big word for asking questions. And so no side wants to be caught off guard. They want to know what you want to know. And you want to know what they want to know. So they will specifically engage in discovery process where they're saying, if there are photographs, we want them. If there are witness statements, we want to read them. Uh, if there are medical reports, we want to know. If there have been any costs 
occurred with this case. So for example, Mr. Sanderson, I'm sorry, Dr. Sanderson is saying that he received uh, treatment because he had broken and bruised, bru uh, uh, bruised, why am I not being able to talk? Bruised ribs, that's what I want to say. Because he has bruised ribs, because uh, he had to go through medical treatment, because he lost time in his uh, uh, practice or maybe in his consultation. He wants to recoup that money, all right? And so in civil discovery, what you were trying to do is you were trying to get all the information and you also engage in what are called depositions. Depositions are sworn testimony hearings where you have a person testifying under oath, but it is not through the formality of being in court sometimes. Usually it is in like in a big law office or something like that. And so the person is testifying and there is a person who is recording and who is also taking down the information so that both parties know what they're getting into. Most civil cases result in a settlement, which is an agreement that is out of court between both parties. And both parties can disclose the details of that settlement or they can choose not to disclose. Now, throughout the years since 2016, Dr. Sanderson and Gwyneth Paltrow, their attorneys, have been engaged in this type of uh, back and forth where they're trying to see, is this something where Gwyneth Paltrow is going to accept responsibility? Is she going to accept a little responsibility? Or is she going to deny responsibility? And so as of, what time is it? 9.07 a.m. Central Daylight Time, this case is still going to trial. The jury has been selected, and so the, today, what I'm going to be, uh, what I'm expected to be commenting on is opening arguments where both the plaintiff's attorney and the defendant's attorney are going to present their case to the jury. At least they're going to engage in, through opening arguments, what they believe the case is about. So for the plaintiff, the plaintiff's attorney is going to be saying that Gwyneth Paltrow, the defendant, is liable for the injuries of Dr. Uh, uh, Sanderson. Now, when I say liable, this is the different language between civil and criminal. When someone is in court, in criminal court, and they are accused of something, and there is the evidence to show it, or there's a plea by the defendant, that terminology is called guilty, meaning I am accepting the criminal liability and responsibility of whatever criminal charge is being brought against me. Unlike that, in civil court, the language is libel. L-I-A-B-L-E. -E. I had to think about it. Libel, which means I am legally responsible in a civil way. Okay? And that is what Dr. Sanderson is alleging. He wants Gwyneth Paltrow to accept civil accountability responsibility by saying she is liable for negligence. Now, what is negligence? Negligence is a civil tort or a civil wrongdoing. Now, if I have any of my prior students uh, who I taught on the south side and west side of Chicago, you know this already because this is what I used to teach to the pre-law honor students at Hirsch High School and Raby High School. All of my scholars, that is your shout out. So when you're talking about civil torts, you are saying civil wrongdoings, where the defendant is not looking at incarceration. The defendant is looking at whether or not they have to do something or refrain from doing something. In this case, the issue is whether or not Gwyneth Paltrow is going to have to pay money to Dr. Sanderson because of any evidence that proves she was liable legally responsible for his injuries and his harm. So whenever you look at a tort, in the same way you look at a crime, you are looking at elements. So elements are to crimes and torts like ingredients are to recipes. So you need all of these ingredients in order to make a bomb recipe, right? You need in court all of these elements to be proven in order for the defendant, Gwyneth Paltrow, to be found 
liable, legally responsible. If any ingredient, if any element is missing, then by law, she is found not to be liable or legally responsible, okay? So the other thing that I want you to know about civil law is that civil law, the level of burden of proof that the, the uh, plaintiff has to prove is preponderance of evidence, preponderance of evidence. So if you were to look at it as levels, in our country, the highest level is beyond a reasonable doubt, okay? The level underneath that is preponderance of evidence. So preponderance of evidence in civil court is, is it more likely than not that the defendant did what the plaintiff is accusing? And so it is the jury that decides that. So it's a little lower than uh, what is happening in criminal court. So I want you to also bear that in mind. The last thing about civil cases is that for negligence, there are four elements or ingredients that the plaintiff has to prove. The plaintiff has to prove duty, breach of duty, causation, and damages. I'll say it again. Duty, breach of duty, causation and damages. And I will give a little synopsis of each of those so you know what you are looking for if you are following this case or if you're just curious about civil law in general. So for negligence, which we already said is a civil tort, a civil wrongdoing, the plaintiff through the evidence, testimonial, which is someone talking or testifying under oath, physical, which is something that you can touch or demonstrative, which is like a map, a photo, anything like that. The plaintiff has to prove, Dr. Sanderson, has to prove that Gwyneth Paltrow was negligent in the four ways. One, that Gwyneth Paltrow owed a duty, a reasonable duty to Dr. Sanderson to ski carefully, to ski mindfully, to make sure that she was not providing any harm or any injury to him or any of the skiers around them. The second thing that Dr. Sanderson has to prove is breach of duty. He has to prove that Gwyneth Paltrow breached or broke her duty to him and other skiers in that she, which is the third element, caused his injury. He has to prove not only was he injured, but that her actions or her lack of care caused his injuries. And then lastly, he has approved damages, which is medical injury, loss of profit, loss of uh, wages, anything like that, okay? If he is successful in proving all of those four things, then Gwyneth Paltrow could be liable or legally responsible for damages. Now that's a little bit different than the fourth element that I just talked about. Damages in civil court is money, meaning what money would she have to pay? That is, of course, if Dr. Sanderson's attorney, through Dr. Sanderson's, pr uh, 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 proves all four elements or ingredients. So the three type of damages in civil court usually are compensatory, which is to compensate. What are the damages? What are the monies that the plaintiff came out of pocket? So did he have to go to therapy? Was he hospitalized? Was he on medication? Um, uh, anything like that, anything out of pocket, he can ask the court or the jury to award to him. Uh, the second type of damages is punitive. Punitive damages are when the plaintiff is seeking to punish the defendant by saying, you did this, and no matter what amount of damage of money I came out of my pocket, you should be punished financially. And as a result, punitive damages are to punish the defendant and also to make an example of the defendant to other would-be defendants to say, if you do this, this is the probable or possible outcome that you can face in the same way that she did. Okay, so that's the second type. The first is compensatory, out-of-pocket damages. The second is punitive, which is regardless of how much the plaintiff may have uh, come out of pocket, punitive damages are to punish. And then the last one is um, nominal damages. Nominal damages are kind of like more symbolic. They're kind of 
uh, significant in the sense of most plaintiffs don't usually seek nominal damages. They usually seek the two big ones, compensatory and punitive. Okay? So, I, of course, am not going to be able to talk about all of that on Core TV, which is why I am bringing it to you so that you understand um, the difference between civil court and criminal court, the difference between what the uh, plaintiff has to prove in civil court and what the prosecution has to prove in criminal court, and then the levels of burdens of evidence, the burden of proof. That is what the technical language is. Is what does the plaintiff have to prove? That is through the uh, preponderance of the evidence, which is, is it more likely than not? That is different than what the prosecution has to prove in criminal court, which is beyond a reasonable doubt. Okay? So, if you are watching uh, Court TV, or if you see local or national news that is talking about the civil case, you will be able to understand it a little bit more because I have explained it to you, which is why I said click like and share with your different platforms, with your different communities. All right, so that's the civil side. Some of the other cases that uh, I could be uh, analyzing or talking about as a guest include uh, the case of the uh, ex-boyfriend who was in Wisconsin and he is charged with the uh, murder of his ex-girlfriend's boyfriend. So in Wisconsin, there is a case going on where the defendant um, is accused of being jealous of his ex-girlfriend who also happens to be the mother of his children. And so what he is accused of doing is he is accused of uh, convincing their oldest daughter who is now 14 um, to spy on her mother, his ex-girlfriend, and to give him the information. And then once he took that information, it is alleged that he killed uh, the ex-girlfriend's boyfriend and then hit the body. So there is no human remains, but that does not stop a criminal prosecution of murder. So I could be commenting on that. Also, there is, uh, I believe it's in Florida, a sentencing of a young man who was charged with the very brutal murder of his classmate and he has pled guilty and now there is a sentencing hearing uh, where it is determining what he's going to receive in prison and I believe he's looking at 40 years to life in prison. And then lastly, there is another case of um, a husband who is accused of hiring someone to kill his wife's lover. I think I said that right, okay? And so the actual killers have already uh, been sentenced and so during their trials, they implicated the husband and said, this is the person who hired us to do this killing. So that is usually called um, a conspiracy uh, or solicitation to commit murder. The differences are conspiracy is where you are um, saying, do this with me, do this criminal act with me. And solicitation is do this criminal act for me. I solicit, I am asking you to do this for me or on my behalf. Okay, so there's a lot going on today in um, the legal realms. And so I just wanted to come on very briefly and tell you uh, what it is that I could be commenting on. And even if you don't watch Court TV and you see these different news bites either on television or in your uh, social media uh, or, or just different streaming platforms, you will be able to come into that conversation, into that analysis with a little bit more than what you started with because that's what Legalese Please is here to do. So thank you for your time. Please make sure that you click like and that you click share so that you can um, be more than just a, a, a student. But you can also be a teacher because that's what we are all here to do. The logo of Legalese Please is about continual knowledge and making sure that we are not just students 
who receive information, we are also educators and teachers and we share the information. So together it's the community that can rise with the comprehension, the knowledge and the access of reputable legal education. All right, so I am going to go ahead and prepare to get on Core TV. These are my earbuds that allows me to hear um, what is going to be happening through the feed on my phone. When I look on television, I'm going to be looking through Skype and I am going to be answering the questions in real time. So I want you to have an amazing day and thank you so much whether you're watching live or later. I appreciate you. Have a great day. Bye-bye.